All right, guys. Um, my name is Mike Shoresman. I work for A.O. Reed. Um, I've been at A.O. Reed for like 13 years. I went through a five-year apprenticeship, and then I had journeyed out, and I've worked with our startup and commissioning department that whole time. Um, I did the startup and commissioning on building A, B, and D. Today, we're going to be talking about the dining building specifically, okay? Um, today, we're going to be talking about the hydronic pumps. So that's going to be your chilled water pumps and your heating hot water pumps. And then we'll also be talking about some plumbing equipment, which will be um, the plumbing, HVAC, natural gas, meters, gauges and valves, and like a general overview of the piping systems itself and the main shutoff valves, main valves. All right guys, um, we ventured over to, uh, we're right outside the dining building. Uh, right now we're gonna talk about the gas, the main gas that comes into dining, okay? We have the underground, we have a, a plug valve down here. So this will be um, like the very first main shutoff valve you would have. So to isolate the system, it'll probably be easier to operate one of these other valves that are up top. Um, either one of the valves will turn off gas into the entire building. Um, this one's probably the easiest one to get to. Um, this plug valve will be your shutoff valve. There's gonna be a gas meter in this vicinity right here. We still have to install that guy. Um, so if you had to work on this or the earthquake valve itself, you could isolate the, the, the gas with this shutoff valve and the main plug valve right here, okay? Um, is everyone familiar with these? You guys know what this is? Anybody know what it is? It's an earthquake sensor, so anytime there's a hard earthquake, Perfect. automatically Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so there's like a little ball that sits in there and if it gets jostled off of that seat, then it slams the valve shut because it's assuming if it's doing that the piping downstream can rupture and you could have a gas leak which would be bad so this is the gas the earthquake shutoff valve on the leaving side right here there's a little service window if you look down inside and it's green it's good it's uh it can flow gas through it if it's red it's shut off so if you get a service call and hey i don't have gas this would be the first thing you'd want to look at is this green or red okay this also is for emergency shut -off plug, right emergency or something. for this if there's a fire inside the building, if it's in one of the kitchen areas, there's a, um, oh my God, I lost the name of it right now. Ansel, Ansel, Ansel system. Yeah, Ansel, Ansel system. system. We'll shut off that local venue, okay? There's a shut off valve there. But if there's a, an issue up in front of one of the boilers or something and there's a outside, then yeah, you would want to shut off one of the valves here, yeah. Or I mean, I guess, yeah, if there is an issue inside the building, there's a fire and it's gas related, You'd want to shut the valve out here. Don't don't try to get into the venue to shut it off. If, if there was an issue like that, just come out here and shut one of these valves. Okay, this this valve or this valve. Okay, so earthquake valve. If it does reset or if it trips to reset it, there's a um, slotted a flat slotted um, port over here. You stick your screwdriver in and you can reset it. If you can't reset it, if that valve is open, uh, we are on the medium pressure side. Sometimes these valves can be hard to reset on the medium pressure side. It's rated for the pressure. It's just resetting it. Sometimes it's tricky. So what you would need to do is shut this valve off right here. And you could um, shut this valve right here. Leave the pressure out of this test port right here. And then it'll be a lot easier to reset it. Okay, that's if it won't reset on its own. That's okay? screw slot right there. This screw slot right here, yes. The flat is horizontal right now. It'll turn and you'll reset it. The um, well, vibrations were enough to make it, you know. I don't know if they hit the ground hard with the bucket. I don't know what it was, but one of them was tripped. We had to reset it. Um, this, to the best of my knowledge, it would be your earthquake valve to reset. If you called someone, I'm assuming they would charge you for it. Okay. So my hair, it will be facility. It will be, it would be a It's good for us to know. Do, That'll be something you guys want to work out internally. Um, from what I understand, let's see facilities. I don't know where they take over gas. We didn't talk about gas specifically on building D. So that'll be something that you guys will want to internally work out on whose responsibility well, that could part be. Part of his team is here. Yeah, our, our, our from the, from there down is, here, is a gas company. From there into the building is all. Okay, so I would think it would be yours. It, again, it's just something for you guys to work out. It is an earthquake valve. It will trip if you bump, bump it. it, okay? Or even if someone like, I mean, I don't want to say that, yeah, if something bumps it hard enough, it could trip it. It doesn't necessarily have to be a machine. Just if you don't have gas in the building, make sure you look at this, make sure it's green. If it's not, we know how to reset it. The other important thing is, is if you do, if someone does have to take piping apart in here, there's this chain right here. 
You want to make sure this chain stays in the middle of the circle down here. That tells you that the device is level and the ball will be able to reset. So if you're also trying to reset it and it won't reset, make sure you take an eye on this too because you can pull this chain out and now you don't know exactly where the valve is sitting. So it, it doesn't matter if it's out right now, it's not going to affect the valve, but if you're looking at it again, make sure the chain, ball, or the chain is inside the hole. That will let you know that the device is sitting level and plumb. Okay? Now there's a stand on it. This is gonna get, yeah, no, this is gonna get removed. There's gonna be a support either on this, I think right here on this line right here. The meter that's not here, we might have to do some modifications, but the piping, all, all the devices will be here. It might just not be in this exact same configuration, okay? So this will get replaced with an actual support cemented into the ground. So moving downstream, we talked about this shutoff valve. This will be your upstream shutoff valve from your pressure reducing valve. This is taking medium pressure gas, knocking it down to like 13 and a half inches. We're going at about seven and a half PSI to 13 and a half inches of water column. Okay. You guys all know the difference between that, right? I think it's like 27 inches of water column is one PSI, something like that. We're talking about like less than a PSI of pressure on this side of the, the red. Okay. It's very important because all the devices inside the building can't handle more than that 14. Okay. So you have a test port here. This is where you could hook up one of your gauges. You can see the inlet pressure and then the outlet pressure all right here. You don't have to run up to a boiler or a water heater and try to check that pressure up there. You can check it all right here, okay? And then it just goes into the building. So the main gas system right here, okay? Again, the gas meter will be installed somewhere here in the piping system. The ga main gas flow meter. Cool? Uh, I believe it's gonna stay like this for right now. Yeah, there's no, nothing in the drawings. I don't believe show a cage around any of this. Okay. Uh, we're going to go to the far roof over here and then we're going to work our way back to this roof and then inside the building. I'll try to talk a little louder. Is everybody ready? Good, Bachi. All right, again, Mike with A.R. Reed. We've uh, made it up to the roof of building D. This is the side of the building that has your domestic water system on it, okay? We're going to start at the very back and we're going to wake, work our way all the way through all the equipment up on the roof. So these pumps right here are going to be your domestic hot water recirculation pumps. We have the two bottom ones are twinned together. So that means that only one will work to get work at, at one time. Okay. We have uh, this one right here is your primary and this would be the secondary or the follower. Okay. Um, this one will control what pump is running. Uh, we, we're gonna have circulation pump training tomorrow, so I'm not gonna get into too much detail of those. But the water comes up, it splits, it can run through either pump, whatever one's running. There's a check valve after it so the water doesn't go backwards in a circle. It'll pump through here. And this line right here is the 140 degree kitchen recirculation loop, okay? So that's going to all the 140 degree sinks or any of the fixtures down there that require the 140 degree water, okay? In the kitchen area. That comes right out of the storage tank and right back into the storage tank. The next two pumps above us are gonna be domestic hot water return again, kitchen loo, but the 120 degree kitchen loo, okay? So this is gonna help pump water through when there's no flow, no usage, right? Nobody's in the kitchen. We want to make sure there's always hot water at the devices, right? Within 30 seconds or so. So this is pumping water through the mixing valve that I'll get to in a sec, and then into the building and then back up here, okay? So again, when they open the fixture, they get that hot water quickly. These again are twinned together. So only one will run and then the other one. This one is the, um, the primary and this is the secondary just because the interface is a little easier to get to, right? Um, there's shutoff valves in it, in front of it. And there's a strainer in front of each pump, the pump. You got peach plugs to check temperatures and pressures on the pump. Again, check valves. And then these are hose bibs. Um, earlier this morning, uh, the same configuration is in building A and B. Um, if you ever do any work to the system downstairs and you need to vent any air out, what I like to do is, uh, these are the disconnect switches in these boxes. So we have a single for a single pump. We have two switches for two pumps, two switches for two pumps, okay? If you're gonna operate these pumps 
If you're gonna try to blow down water or anything like that, or blow down like a lot of water through one of these hose bits, I like to turn the pumps off, okay? That way the pump's not spinning, uh, mechanically spinning on its own. And what you'll do is you'll shut one of these, the valves off on the outlet side. That way you're forcing all of the water out the drain. Because the check valves are here, you have to shut this valve off so you're gonna be bleeding water back this way, right? What we're trying to do is flush air out of the building, okay? We're trying to blow it up here and get it out of the system, right? Because if it, if it gets air bound, it won't, it won't circulate water. So you shut the valve, hook up a hose here, hook up to the drain. There's a couple drains up on the roof here. Make sure you blow it down into a roof drain, not the low point drains down there. Those are just going out to the side of the building like we saw downstairs. Make sure you use one of the, um, the roof drains with the lip around the edge. So you, blow, you open the valve up all the way, all the, the, the hose stops dancing. If the hose is dancing, there's air, okay? Keep it going, keep it going. Get all that air out. Then you can shut this valve and then you can open this valve back up. That way we know all the air is out of the system down below, okay? We do have air vents in front of the pumps. It could take a while to get the air out with those. Those are kind of like, in case there's a little bit of something, something around the spot, it could burp out the air. But for like a main shutdown, if you've drained the entire building, you want to use this hose bib, how I've showed you right here, to blow out the air, it'll happen. It'll, it'll um, recover a lot quicker. Once you close this and you're done, then make sure you open the valve back up. Everybody following me right now? Same thing with these pumps, you can do the same thing. This loop is really small, so it won't take as long, okay? That's these two pumps. The top pump right here. What were these two pumps right here? 120. What was that? 120. 120 what? Kitchen, right? Kitchen. It's kitchen research. So all the fixtures and stuff in the kitchen, okay? The last one up here is gonna be a domestic hot water research loop. 120 degrees, non-kitchen return, okay? All your bathrooms. This is the return loop on that. It's just a single pump. So if this thing stops working, it just might take a couple extra minutes in a bathroom to get hot water. Kitchens are more important for, uh, you know, hand cleaning and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, sanitization stuff, okay? So redundant, redundant for both kitchen systems, just a single on the... Any questions on this so far? I know it's a lot of information, there's just a lot to cover. You guys get what we're doing? You understand? I'm sure you have domestic hot water research loops out there, right? They gotta be in your buildings, no? Okay, so you're gonna see these now. Um, again, we'll go over the pump operation a little later. As we go down, so the, this line right here, since 140 degrees, we have a storage tank back here that's storing water at 140 degrees. Anytime you store water, it has to be over 140 for Legionella, okay? That's a bacteria that can grow in the water. So 140 degree set point, okay? So this is just dumping straight back into the tank, okay? and it pulls out the top of the tank. And then it's this line right here that goes out to the building. Here's your shutoff valve right here, 140 degree loop, okay? The piping won't be labeled by the time we're done. I'm sorry? This, 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 this part. Yeah, this pipe right here is your 140 degree research. Again, we'll have a label on this one. It's coming from downstairs. So it goes down the building there, it makes a big loop around to all the venues because they're using the, in, in the kitchen area, they're using that water and it comes back up this line right here. So this will be the aquastat for these two pumps. Okay? And then this one right here is our 120 degree kitchen return loop. This guy. And then this one right here is the 120 non-kitchen return. Okay? It goes all the way up to the top pump. As we're going through, we'll talk about this guy because this mixing valve is first. You guys know do you have any mixing valves out in your buildings right now so because we're we store 140 degree water and we have a kitchen loop here if we sent that to a bathroom you wash your hands you get burnt instantly at 140 okay we don't want anything over 120 as you can see our temperature is right at 120 119 120 okay so this device takes the 140 on the hot side and mixes cold water with it to give us 120 outlet, okay? The, there's a low flow and a high flow for GPM, okay? There's spring checks in here that keep this high flow regulator closed until they hit a certain GPM. Then they'll lift open and they'll flow water through here. So that would be your highest demand situation, okay? 
Other than that, in normal mode, or like low flow or one or two fixtures, all the water's gonna be running through here. And in no in low in no flow conditions, we're pumping water back through the bottom of the mixing valve, okay? And it's coming out. It should be coming back around 110 or so, and we want it leaving 120. So the majority of the water goes to this valve. This valve has been set. I'm gonna try to swap it out for a style like this, a circuit setter, so it has adjustments and you can see numbers on it, okay? Because right now you don't know the position. So I'm hoping to get a circuit setter on this. This will be adjusted and there'll be a stop. So this screw right here allows you to close it, but not open it any further, okay? We wanna just keep it to that, back of that open position, it might not be all the way. But this is how we fine tune the loop to give us a 120 constant leaving temperature, okay? So the majority of the water is pumped back through here, through the valve, and this line right here, what we're doing is we're pumping water through the storage tank. Because we lose heat, heat always goes from hot to cold, we're always losing heat, it's never gonna come back 120, okay? So we gotta bump that temperature back up. That's what we're doing with this line right here. We're pumping just a little bit of water through the tank and a little bit through the hot side on this valve, this valve down here, to give us that 120 outlet, okay? It's important that we do, we maintain this 120 degree outlet. On some of these loops, we have thermostatic, um, they're called temp control valves. Are you, so you guys are kind of familiar with domestic hot water return loops? Normally you have an auto flow. It only flows a certain GPM, but it's that GPM all the time. So these devices expand and contract off the temperature. So they're 115 degree set point valves, okay? So as they start hitting 115, they'll be closed but not all the way closed. They flow minimal water through them, okay? So as they cool off, they open and allow more to flow. It's like a self-balancing system in that regard, okay? So if we're not outputting 120, they can't ever start modulating close. So then you'll have cold spots. Hey, it's, we're not getting hot water in this part of the building. We're not getting it here. So the first thing you wanna do is double check the drawings, figure out where those are. And what you do is you gently touch the pipe, okay? If it's warm, then you can grab it and see if it's totally cold or if it's you know, if it's totally cold, you know it's probably plugged up or a valve in front of it is shut off, or you're just not outputting enough temperature at the closed devices to push that water to the further away devices. Does that make sense? You guys follow me? If you don't, ask me questions, okay? Low flow, high flow. Each device has a shutoff valve, okay? There's two shutoff valves up here for the upper and then the outlet. That way you can isolate this from this unit and take this apart, clean it. These are, these require maintenance. Um, I told the guys this morning, there's a log sheet on these. Watch out for the boots. So here's an inspection log sheet. I was telling them that we should add another column in here that says temperature. So you wanna do your inspections up here, okay? You wanna record temperatures in case there ever is an issue. You can prove to people that you were verifying outlet temperatures, okay? Uh, in dining building, I'm assuming, is there only one shift? Are there two shifts for dining building? Three shifts. So I'm gonna recommend every shift records the, the temperature, okay? In the other buildings, they only have one shift. Minimally once, I said twice, to getting it in. Ultimately, it's up to you guys, okay? The more data you can record, the more it shows people that you're on top of what you're doing, okay? In case there's ever an incident. Somebody gets burnt or something like that, right? You can show them that you're doing your due diligence to monitor the equipment and make adjustments when necessary. The facility not up. The facility not up. Now, I, that's not up to me to decide who does it. I'm just letting you guys know. I mean, you can. I would assume that you can still make the. You can make the um, recording. Hey guys, I got a temperature that's out of calibration or something. You know, let let somebody know. I would assume that you can do the inspection. I don't know. That's up to you guys again. I'll just let you know what I would recommend in monitoring this kind of a situation, okay? This will be tuned, and this is tuned. So these two valves work together to give us our 120 outlet, okay? We have the same exact situation on this mixing valve over here. When we follow our low loop, it runs into these two pumps. So this is our 120 kitchen degree research loop, okay? So this, this mixing valve right here is serving the kitchen all the 120 degree seats, okay? It's the same exact situation. You got stops here, and low, low usage, you're using this reg. They're both set to 120 degrees. 
So there's a procedure in the O&M to follow to set them uh, to their proper temperature. Uh, never over 120. Over 120 you can get burnt. So if you see like this valve is almost at full hot, well, I've set the stop so you can't make it go past 124. It's like a worst case scenario, someone doesn't pay attention and smashes it over. It won't output 140 degree water, okay? I've, I've tried to set that stop as low as possible, but still where we can adjust it to maintain our 120, okay? These are serviceable parts. Um, if you do see the temperature getting out of, out of whack and it's not maintaining, uh, follow the O&M procedure on how to shut this down and clean the device. There's a gasket kit and all that kind of stuff that we can follow to clean these. Okay, they're, they're separate kits for the upper and lower regulator. Um, there are set screws down here to lock in the handle so you can't easily turn it. Don't force it. You have to loosen that screw if you do need to make an adjustment. Um, again, shut off valves here. And then this one right here will isolate the lower unit. Two up here. And this big one will isolate the upper unit. Um, when you would open it up, just go slow. You got to bleed a little bit of the pressure out of the cover. There's no external like drain valve over here. I'm sorry? That's the system. Yeah, I set it all up and we're outputting 120 degrees on both systems. Yep. And maintaining it. That's why all the valves are in all their positions. So this valve right here will go in conjunction with this valve right down here. Okay? Those two are tuned together to give us that 120 outlet. So if that 120 started climbing, so the, the important thing too is when you're making, if you ever do need to make an adjustment to any of these settings, first make sure the pump is running. The proper pump is running. And you almost have to do it, or you have to do it at a no flow condition. So that'd be when the dining building is closed and you know nobody's using water. Because as soon as somebody's using water, it can, it can change these temperatures, okay? All this is for is if nobody's using water in the middle of the night, but when they do use it, the hot water's there right away, okay? So if the temperature started getting too high, what you can do is tap this valve a little bit open. What you're doing is forcing more of the colder return water through the regulator, so it'll drop the outlet temperature. If this starts falling off too much, you can either close this one more or open this one more, okay? Hopefully you don't need to do that. I would also, if, if you're drifting too far away, I would start looking at the internals of this one, okay? During high usage, then this one. To verify the set point on each one, all you have to do is shut the isolation valve. Well, by shutting this valve, we just lost flow to the pump, okay? So make sure that if you're shutting stuff off to check stuff, you have to shut down the pumps off, okay? The switch is right here. Make sure you turn off both. If there's twin pumps, make sure you turn off both together. We'll talk about it more tomorrow, but just as a brief one, don't turn off the pumps and turn them on and turn them off and turn them on. These are variable speed pumps and they have capacitors in them, so you'll you'll lower the lifespan of the pumps by doing that, okay? But we do want to use these switches to turn off the pumps, okay? Thermometers, all the valves, shutoff valves, a main cold water shutoff valve, but if you shut this off, you're shutting off all the cold water. And then where's my hot water? Goes right here. Hot water shutoff valve is going to shut all the hot water off to this guy, okay? Off to this mixing valve. Each one has its own. Hot water, follow the loops to here, and cold water to here. Okay? Remember your main hot water shutoff right here for 140 degrees? Just know if you shut this off, again, we have a pump pushing water through it. You gotta shut the pump off if you gotta shut this off, okay? If not, it'll cavitate the pump and it'll, it won't work, okay? For the 140 degree loop. The kitchen 140 degree loop. Does that make sense? So kitchen 140 and 120 is for the medicine. There's a bunch, yeah. Got a this piping will be labeled by the time we're done too. Oh, sure, yeah. Okay. So there's no mixing for the 140 then? No, because the storage tank is 140. Yep. There are check valves on these lines right here. Okay. <laughs> that way the water doesn't go backwards. There's spring check valves. There's another isolation valve right here for the 140 degree line that goes back into the tank. Return for the. It's a return for each one of the uh, 120 degree loops. 
This is the line that pumps back into the tank to give to boost our temperature back up. Alright, on over here as we move down. You guys know what this red device is over here? Expansion tank. No? Expansion tank. Okay, yep, expansion tank. So this is the domestic hot water expansion tank. Since we are pumping water in a circle, there's a chance for expansion. The expansion will go into the tank, okay? Instead of into the piping and try to blow up our piping. Uh, the water pressure up here is 65 pounds. The tank is set at 64 pounds, one pound under. You guys, so even if you do or don't check the charge, I'll go over it case whoever is eventually coming down the road to be able to watch the video and have an idea of how to do this, okay? There's a shutoff valve back over here, the top copper line. So to check the charge on this expansion tank, we need to close this valve. We already have the hose hooked up to the hose picking down here. There's a drain. We open that valve. When the water is done flowing into the drain, there's no more water pressure in the tank, and it's just a nitrogen charge, okay? We use nitrogen in the expansion tanks because it's a, a gas that doesn't um, change pressure um, depending on its temperature, okay? It stays relatively close to the same pressure unless you get to the way extremes that we don't deal with, okay? So you would open that valve, drain all the water. Then there's a port over here, there's a cap. You gotta undo this cap. And then there's a strainer cap, like your tire you're on your car, okay, you take that cap off, and then with this valve still open, you can measure the air pressure, okay, the nitrogen charge. And we want to make sure we're at 64. If we're not at 64, we need to figure out why. Is the strainer leaking? The strainer is threaded into the valve? Exactly. And this tank needs to be replaced. There's a bladder in here, but it's a non-replaceable bladder. This size tank, you just replace the tank. Okay. When you're done, make sure you tighten the, the um, strainer cap, not too far that it'll break. You gotta tighten it down, but you also wanna make sure it's not loose enough that that strainer core eventually fails, that you lose your nitrogen charge out that way too, okay? Um, once you're done checking the charge, close this valve right here, the drain valve, right? And then slowly open the shutoff valve that we shut off over here. Right now the pressures are equalized since I didn't take any pressure away so I could open it faster than I normally would, okay? Just nice and slow. Expansion tank. Now we're into our big storage tank. So this is our water storage tank for building the roof. We have shutoff valves on the circulation line here. down there, the inlet is here, the inlet to the tank, okay, and then there's the 140 outlet to the system at the top of the tank, it's a big butterfly, okay, at the top of the tank. So three valves need to be, or four valves, all the valves attached to the tank will need to be isolated to service the tank, okay. We have the three, the one on the top, one on this side, we need to isolate this valve, and then the two valves are on these two lines down here too. Does this also supply a this machine? Yes, that's what I was saying. That's over here. That's this 140 degree line right here. So remember that small line right there that I pointed out the valve? That's your 140 degree outlet. So see this header up here? That header turns around and it comes right out of the top of the tank. And that's your 140 degree line that goes down to the... Yep. Yeah, this, so this system is providing water for the kitchen and for the restroom. All your domestic hot water is, is started right up here on this roof. There is a manway in the tank. I would say yearly you want to have this inspected. Um, I would work it out, whoever you guys would have to do those inspections. I, it might be the health and safety department. We have two more pumps back here on the wall. These two pumps are only circulating water in and out of the tank to each water heater, okay? 
Each water head heater has its designated pump. We'll go over more of those um, tomorrow when we have surf pump training. But those, there's two pumps over here. Yeah. All right. So each of those pumps is controlled by an aquastat. It's in this box right here. So the boilers. The aquastats are just monitoring the temperature of the tank. If the tank drops below 140, remember our set point's 140, it will turn on a pump, and then when the temperature drops on the water heater loop, it'll start running the water heater. Okay. Again. On this building right here, one pump, one water heater, one pump, one water heater. There's no redundant pump. So if, you, if one pump doesn't work, you're not going to be able to push that hot water into the into the build, into the tank. You'll have to rely on the other heater. Okay, well that one's getting fixed. Okay. Shut off valves, the hose bib, same situation. Obviously, if you're doing any work here, if you did my uh, venting situation, it won't take as long. You're not draining out as much water. Okay. So these are our gas lines that come up. You got a main shutoff valve and then another test board after it. Same thing over here, main shutoff valve, test board. And that goes straight into the water heater. The gas pressure up here is like 13 and a half inches, okay? Because we're on the downstream of that regulator. Nothing here is on, uh, there's no medium pressure going into this building. It's all over. Each water heater has a shutoff valve. This is more just a brief overview of the water heaters. We're going to have training on the water heaters tomorrow, okay? Any questions now so far? We're pretty much done up on this side of the roof. You guys have any questions? There's been a lot of information. Everybody understands the mixing valves, right? How they work, the set point. Um, and the maintenance on those, obviously if you're seeing a drift, there is a cartridge, it's a sleeve that slides back and forth and, that, and there's a spring, it's all calibrated depending on your set point and it's sliding back and forth to maintain your set point, our 120, okay? Anything else we're up here, any questions? Okay, let's move on. All right guys, we're still up on uh, building D roof on the water heater side of the building. Uh, we're at air handler 1D. Um, I just want to show you the chilled water and hot water valves that are up here. Um, so each coil has a circuit center on it. Um, you shouldn't need to isolate the unit here. Um, but if you do, just pay attention to the number that we're at here on this dial. You can close the valve and when you're done, you can open it back up to that number. That just distributes the flow equally between there's two coils on this unit. And on the other side there will be a shutoff valve. So I think there's just actually a main shutoff valve. So really you shouldn't need to adjust these two. These two have been set by our balance company to equal the flow through the units. Right now if you needed to shut down the unit, we have two shutoff valves right behind us. Okay, we have a supply right here and a return right here. We have a strainer in the loop. We cleaned all the strainers during our startup and commissioning and flushing of all the piping, so this should be good. Uh, once a year or so, or if you're starting to lose flow and you get a big pressure drop across here, uh, we'd have to Google the manufacturer's information to figure out that pressure drop. Um, if you measure a pressure drop and it's greater than a certain number, it'll tell us if the strainer's plugged, then we'll need to clean that. Okay, and then we'll need to isolate it with our two shutoff valves. Water goes into the coil. We have two drains here on the supply and on the return. And then we have a return control valve. So the BMS company is modulating this valve to equal an outlet temperature across on the air handler. Same on the chilled water. We have our main shutoff valves, supply and return. We have a strainer up here. Again, that was clean during startup. We have the control valve right next to it, and then we have the balance valves on the return side of the coil just to equal the flow through each of the two coils in there. Yeah, there's two coils on the inside. So that's what's providing cooling to the space downstairs for half of the building. Yeah. Okay. We're 
it up. How many air handlers do we have? All right, real quick. Um, we're back. We're still at building D. We're outside of the building. This is the main backflow. Um, I just wanted to show you the water meter. The water meter is located in that box right after the backflow. Okay. That was it. That was how complicated this side was. Just main backflow. So if there was a major, major issue and you couldn't get in the building, if you shut off one of these two valves, I would probably shut off the inlet. No, shut off the outlet. Keep the pressure in the backflow and shut the outlet valve, right? Because if you lose downstream pressure, then it'll dump, right? So if you shut this and the pressure over there was higher, then it could dump on the floor, all over your feet. So shut the outlet. If there's a major flood in there, like some main piping blew apart and you didn't have a chance to get in the building, if you shut this valve right here, it'll shut the water, all the water into the building. So remember, if you do that, part of that system will be going up and sudden shutting off all of our surf pumps, right? If we lose water, we got to shut off power to the surf pumps. Okay? So you'd have to run up to the roof and make sure you shut all the switches. I mean, within like 15 minutes, right? 20 minutes. Like if you just don't forget about that part of it, okay? Because that is important or else you'll be replacing expensive pumps up there. Okay. This would shut the, what if you shut off the, the main water, building, the or if you're, or if you're working on that pump, or if you're working on part of that system that has the pump, all of the hot water, the hot, the hot water system have pumps. So if you're working on the main part of the system, the global power system, you're going to need to make sure you shut off a pump and then return on the pump when you're done. So this is the main water supply line. This is the main water for the building D. Okay. All right, we'll go to the other roof. All right, guys. Uh, We've transitioned from, uh, we're still on top, we're still on building D roof, okay? Now we're back on the opposite side of the roof. Uh, this is where all of the heating hot water boilers are, your heating hot water pumps, and your chilled water pumps, and the other air handler. Um, we're just going to start at the far end of the roof and work back towards the roof hatch. Um, the first two pumps that we see here are going to be the chilled water pumps. So you have a pump one and a pump two. They just have D's at the end to distinguish building D's from the other ones. Um, we have shut off valves in front of the pumps and after the pumps. Valence on the far side, you can see we have two strainers. We come through the pump and we come out and there's a check valve here and then a shut off valve. <coughs> okay. Um, the pumps don't necessarily have to be running, okay? The central plant has enough DP sometimes to push water through this building, like in off-peak hours. There are three fan coils in the building down here, one electric room and two IDF rooms that require cooling all the time, okay? So know that if something happens and we have to shut off the chilled water into the building, like one of these valves, or mostly if it's this valve right over here, that's one of the main shutoff valves. And then the other valve right over here is the main shutoff valve. If you shut one of those two, you're gonna stop chilled water flow into this building up on the roof. I'll show you two more shutoff valves that are downstairs. Okay. These two shutoff valves are only supply shutoff valves. The only return shutoff valve is downstairs. I'll show you that. Okay. So you can't shut both of these and expect no chilled or, you know, if you have a leak, you're still going to have a, 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 an issue on the return side. But if you do shut one of these, you will stop flow into all the air handlers and the fan clothes. Okay. So two main shutoff valves, so shutoff is valves. Is that the one coming pump. from the plant? No, that's what I'm saying. All that will do is isolate up here, what you see right above us, okay? okay. okay. Only here and above. Okay. The pumps and everything above us. Okay. Only on the supply side. These are not main shutoff valves coming from the underground. We'll go in the building and I'll show you those two. Okay. okay. We do have, since this is a high point, we have an air vent right here, the red device. If air bubbles come in, they'll get extruded out that vent. Right above me is two shutoff valves that are, will stay normally open. And there's a check valve in the middle. So if we have a condition like right now, there's not a lot of flow, water will bypass the pumps and run through this check valve and out into the system, okay? So you don't necessarily need a pump running to have cooling for this building. You'd have to look at the front end to see if we need that or not, okay? The pumps are uh, sealed pumps. The bearings are sealed. They're, uh, they look just like the heating hot water pumps. We'll look up at those. Obviously, these need to stay in cases for condensation. Okay. Um, gauges in front of and behind the pump. Thermometers. Those pumps are run off of VFDs. We'll have VFD training later in the week. Those are the two VFDs. Um, these pumps are pretty maintenance free. The only time you could have an issue is a seal leak, and I'll show you where those are on the 
to keep hot water pumps since these ones are covered. As we keep making our way down here, we have another gas line. We have gas lines right here. So we have each individual boiler has its own gas line with its own shutoff valve. Okay, if you need to isolate a boiler, make sure you shut off all the valves, um, fuel valves and water valves. Um, that way there's no issues and then turn off the power. We'll go over that later. So this boiler's shut off valve is right here for gas. We have a water inlet and a water outlet shut off valve, okay? strainer on all three of the boilers we have a test port up here for the gas line we'll go over more training on all the other devices associated with the boilers and boiler training tomorrow we'll keep making our way up the roof any questions again chilled water pumps piping again we'll do VFD training in another couple days the most important thing I'll say right now is just make sure the keypads are in auto. Let's just look at that real quick because we already found a couple of pumps not in auto. So this one says off. And this one says off. Right now I think controls are still integrating to all these, but obviously you're gonna wanna make sure you're in the auto. This top left corner will say auto, okay? That'll be crucial for the, that's why these pumps aren't running right now. These are in the off position. Okay. They're still finishing up some integrations on these two pumps though. Huh? All right, ready? We're coming up the roof. Um, this line, this copper line right here is gonna be your domestic water right here. Once we hit this backflow right here, we're industrial water now, okay? So now we're on our heating hot water makeup station. We're getting into the heating hot water system now. This is gonna be the water fill station that fills the boilers and the heating hot water loop, okay? It's all one big loop. The set point on this regulator will be 46 pounds. The expansion tank is at 45 pounds, okay? We always want a one pound under our set point, okay? That way the water the pressure in the system has a place to push into, okay? This valve down here is a bypass. We don't want to use this. It needs to stay closed at all times unless you're doing, unless well, you had to drain like the entire system and it's totally empty and you need to fill it up really quickly. Someone will be up here monitoring pressures. Um, you'd want to set it up till we got close to like maybe um, 40 pounds or so on this gauge. Then you would close it and let, let this reg fill the rest of the system back up to our um, our 46 PSI, okay? Pressure relief right here, 125 pounds, or um, it's just pressure right now for that one. To check this, to check the pressure on this regulator, what you can do is shut this valve, and this gauge pressure will give you the actual reading, okay? So right now we're a little high, so we need to bleed some pressure off. And right now it's slowly creeping back up. I'll need to look at this regulator and make sure there's no debris stuck on the seat right here. And if this valve looked good, I would shut this valve. So right now by shutting this valve, we know that this isn't filling it, or this is what's filling it and not the bypass valve, okay? Because if this valve was leaking by, the pressure would keep going up, but it stopped. So now we need to look at the seat on this valve right here. Does everyone follow what I was just doing? Does it make sense? Okay, that's how you could check the pressure set point, because now we're back up at 70. We're at 70 right now because we're open to the system. I'll look into this one. It's important that we keep it at our set point, okay? If it gets too high, we just don't, we don't need any pressure higher than that. We're at the highest part of the roof, so we're not trying to push water up the building anymore. Like over there, the fill station's on the ground, so you have to do math and figure out the height of the building and try to maintain a positive pressure at the top of the building. We don't have that, we're at the high point right here. 45 pounds is a good set point. So that makeup water will go into this uh, air separator right here. 
the air comes in, the water comes in here and swirls around and it creates like a vortex. The air stays in the middle, the water goes to the outside and the air goes out the top, out that red vent out there, okay? And through here into each pump. Uh, these pumps are redundant. The chilled water pumps are redundant. We should only be running one at a time. We have strainers on the inlet, check valves on the outlet. If the pump ever seemed like it went out of control and it was running at full speed all the time, you'd want to check. You'd want to shut one of the, the manual valves on each pump individually. Or whatever pump's running, it's the opposite pump, right? You'd want to shut that isolation valve, see if the pump slows down. If it does, the check valve isn't holding, okay? And you'll need to replace it. Take it apart, clean it, whatever it is, inspect the seals, make sure the seal's good. If you do that and it all looks good and it still doesn't hold, then you'd have to replace the unit, okay? So these are our two heating hot water pumps. We got shutoff valves, um, the expansion tank. Again, same thing as over on the domestic system. There's a manual shutoff valve over here. We shut that valve. There's a drain down over here. We hook up a hose to this drain. Make sure you don't dump that on the roof. This is treated water, okay? You run that hose to one of the floor drains. There's one behind the boilers over here that the boiler drains are going to. Make sure you have it go down the drain to sewer, okay? Um, the water that came out of here is domestic water because this valve was off, okay? This is all domestic water until it hits the main system up at the top of the tank. This one's a little different. The little charge port is right here. Okay. You'll uh, bleed the pressure off the tank. Make sure you leave the valve open when you're checking the pressure. This one has a gauge here too. I like to use my own gauges. It's up to you guys. Just make sure it's an accurate reading gauge. Once you're done, close the drain valve. There is a hose cap on this. So you have to take this off first, but then close this valve and then you can open up your main system valve again. Okay, that's the expansion tank and checking the charge. I would check the charge at least once a year, if not every six months or so. Again, that's protecting the piping from expansion and um, piping failing from uh, expansion, okay? Too much pressure in the piping. So these are the pumps. So this is what the chilled water pumps look like too. They're just uh, a little bit bigger. If you ever see water leaking out the drain hole or out the bottom of that pump cover, it could be the seal that's failed. You have to take apart that pump case Unfortunately, those pumps need to be insulated like that or else we'll have condensation problems, okay? So you just gotta be gentle, take it apart, and then when you're done, you need to put it back together and on the chilled water pumps and caulk everything back together. Um, but that pump pollute, the lower part of the pump looks the same down there as up here. Uh, the blue device back here is a pot feeder. Uh, the pot feeder is used to add the chemicals. I said this is a closed loop, so we have, it's a chemically treated system. That's where you would add the chemicals. Again, if you need to use that drain, make sure you hook up a hose and run it all the way over to the drain and make sure you're draining water into the drains. There's chemicals in that water. Um, you have to shut off both valves. We have an in and an out. Make sure both of these valves are closed. This one right here is cracked because we don't want a dead leg. We don't want any, to, any piece of the piping system to not have flow, continual flow. So this is just barely cracked open just to keep a little bit of the water circulating through the tank. We close this one. With the, with the hose hooked up to here, you can bleed the pressure off. Once the pressure's off, then you can break the cap free, okay? It's very important that you break the pressure, that you bleed the pressure off of the system before you try to blow, break this cap off, okay? So if it gets really hard, stop, step back and look, make sure everything's valved out too, because if you leave one valve semi-open, semi and you know, if you open this up and it won't bleed away, the pressure won't bleed away. It could be a valve that's gonna close all the way. Make sure it's closed, bleed the pressure off, and then open the cap, okay? Then you could add your chemicals. When you're adding chemicals, I, don't, I doubt you guys will be doing it. I think it's AquaServe is who we dealt with before, but I don't know who's gonna ultimately do the chemical treatment. They should be the ones adding this. Really, you shouldn't really need to add any chemicals. It's a closed loop, it shouldn't be draining. But if you had a reason you gotta drain the system to fill it back up, we wanna check the chemical levels, okay? So when you're done, you close this valve right here, then you can slowly fill it back up at the bottom until it's at the top, when all the air's out, put the cap back on and open the valve slowly. And then leave one valve just cracked open. Okay. 
Okay. Is this for this hot water? This is, no, this is heating hot water right now. So this is creating the heating downstairs. Okay, we transfer the gas energy from the end of the, end of the boilers. We burn, burn the gas, make heat, heat the water, and then pump that water around the building to warm the building. Um, the domestic water was on the other side of the system, on the other rooftop. Everybody good with this so far? Yes. Coming through, we just have our second pump, again, a redundant pump. This loop up here is a bypass loop. It maintains a minimum flow for the pump. Um, if, the, if, the, if the pump slows down to a certain speed and there's not enough valves open downstairs, this valve will start opening. The control guys are, are controlling this valve when it opens and closes, but that's what this valve is for. Um, the pumps need a certain amount of GPM for them to circulate water with. So these would be um, the main main shutoff valves right here for your heating hot water system for down below the roof. Okay, so if you had an issue downstairs and it wasn't on like a VAV level, a VAV is the device if you're putting the hot water through to heat up certain zones, right? Everybody familiar with VAVs by chance? Okay. So if you had an issue and it wasn't on the VAV side, there's shutoff valves down there. I'll show you some of those. If it's on like the system side, you'll want to shut these valves right here. Supply and return. You got to shut both. This will be supply. This will be return. So this is the hot water going down. This is the the cooler warm water coming up. Okay. What was that? Yeah, so it's going down at 140 and it's coming back at 124. So we're using a little bit of energy downstairs, reheating zones or something. Uh, the boilers are, it should be, I believe it was 150, well, or maybe this was 140. On boiler chain, we'll go over the set points. All right, as we keep going, the last thing we have up here is an air hand, the last air handling unit. Watch your head. Same thing over there, you got your, your shutoff valves up here, so this will isolate the air handler hot water coil. The two valves over there will isolate the chilled water coil. We have the circuit setters to balance the water to go equally across the two coils. Strainers over here too. Uh, the heating hot water pumps do have Zerk fittings on the motor. So if we check the O&M, it'll give us grease intervals. We want to follow those. When we do VFD training, I can show you how to look at run hours on the VFD. It will allow you to know a better idea of where you're at with run hours on the, the, the motor itself. Any questions about anything else up here? Any questions on any of the things I've talked about? It's been a lot. We're just going to refer to the video. Okay. <laughs> We're going downstairs. Oh yes, water heaters and boilers. Yes, the tra training on those is tomorrow, and the stir pumps. Those are all factory startup devices. The pumps up here are pretty. Easy. These are pretty easy pumps. There's no alignment. Um, if a motor fails, you can pretty much just bolt it back together. Um, as long as the bolt holes line up, it's gonna. It's like self aligning. The, like I said, the biggest thing on these would be the seal, and you'd want to follow the O&M, the maintenance manual on the seal process removal and installation. It's too complicated to try to tell you guys. And you just need a really big Allen key to take them apart. Yeah. All right, we'll go downstairs. All yours. All right, guys, we made it down inside the building. Uh, we're in building D still. Uh, we were up on the roof, I showed you guys all the chilled water, right, the pumps. We're here inside this venue, grill, grill station. the grill station, our main chilled water supply and return shutoff valves, okay? So this right here will shut off the chilled water to this entire building. But remember, when you do that, you're going to lose cooling to the electric room and the IDF rooms, okay? There's two, one electric room and two IDF rooms. 
Okay, so if we do have to shut it down for any prolonged period of time, we want to thought, try to think of some type of moving cool device, a temporary cooling device that we could put in the doorways or something like that. But you'll have to work with the IT department. Just some, we just have to think of the cooling for those three rooms that we, that we will lose when we shut these valves off, okay? <clears throat> Everyone follow that? Chilled water supply and return, main shutoff valves for building D. You're going to lose cooling to this entire building when you shut one or both of these off. If you shut off one, you'll lose flow. If you shut off two, you'll stop a leak and stop flow. Does that make sense? How do you know which one's returning? How do you know which one's? Uh, we will have to get a tag on them. Isn't that usually the direction of the handle? No, don't do that. Don't rely on that. It could be, but don't rely on the direction of the handles. Because if this, if you can, Use that as a base, but do not rely on that, okay? I'll have to try to figure that out. I don't have it memorized. It's been a long time since we flushed the building. I remember then, but not now. <laughs> we'll try to get some, we should have some valve tags on this, okay? Shut off valves in here. And so is that, we put the one outside closer to the building? No, this is just this chilled, is chilled water. water. So this is chilled water that comes from your guys' central plant. It's for the air There's, conditioning. Yeah. Yes, for the air conditioning. There's underground piping that goes into out on the like near the edge of the landscaping out here. There's some underground piping that goes out that way that ties into the mains underground. So this comes from the central plant at Cal Poly Pomona. Chilled water. Well, chilled water. How about the water that you're also outside water. there? The one back in the corner is domestic cold water. Domestic. Okay. When I was standing on the water meter box. We have two sources of water coming out. That's potable. This is non-potable. This is a closed loop treated water. Yeah, from upstairs. Okay. We saw the two pumps were the first ones we talked about. That's chilled water. Non-potable. That provides the cooling for the building. Okay. That's just a main, yeah, that's just a manual shutoff valve. I believe the ansels are up in the ceiling above. It's right above, it's right back here. So each one of these should have its own shutoff valve. That'll be a separate training. Where's the uh, It could be in there. That's a different training. Yep, different boxes and three chins. So right off the top of my head, I don't have it memorized which things are 140, which ones are 120 and half Yeah, I have to look. We're talking about the sink here. Um, if it's a 120, 140 sink, obviously anything above 120 will get your hands burnt. So, so a hand wash is a Yeah. Yeah. Like the one behind us. 120 should be about 40 for washing. Don't have Don't forget that. Remember, if this is a 140 sink, I would touch up here, touch something else first, use a thermometer, okay? If you're ever in question what type of sink you're dealing with, use a mechanical device to measure temperature, okay? Okay? So each venue will have its own water shutoff valves. Uh, they are located up in the ceiling. We'll have to... We'll have to look at the actual drawings to uh, determine those locations. Um, 
again, there's a gas shut-up valve we saw right off the drill. And this is the grill um, that you know, I'm thinking this is a leak. Sounds like an alarm. <laughs> but I don't know who's alarm. Is it the fridge? The blue will be um, exhaust hand switches. Yeah, it's part of the Ansel system, I believe. This one's just a light. No, the grill, I think the grill was one of the only units, but it's all controlled off temperature. Or the Ansel system itself. But some of the fans will have, if there's two buttons, one will be a light, one will be the operation. So they're supposed to turn on the unit when, they, when, they, when they're starting to use it. But if they don't and the temperature rises, then it will turn on the unit. I know, we have exhaust fan training on the Okay. We have a gas range. So down here, behind the, the device, we're gonna have a shutoff valve and a gas regulator. And then that will feed this device. Okay. Yeah. So at every venue, every device will have its own shutoff valve, okay? I would assume this is eventually gonna get pushed back. So it will, if the gas needs to be turned off to this device, then it will have to be slid out and you'll be able to access the device. Okay, Sometimes this will have to be removed, like to shut off the valve to that prior. They'll have to get pulled out because it's only reachable from the back. So they don't have access in the front of them. All of them. Some of them do, some don't. This is one of our plumbers that helped install the devices over here in Jordan D. His name's Robert. Help, help finish doing the rest of the training on devices down in the, in the space. So the water shutoffs for this unit, this unit has its own water shutoffs, and they can be up in the ceiling tiles in this general area up here. Okay? The other venue will have its shutoff valves. Um, what I was told too is that all the all the sinks out here are actually only 120 sinks, but it'll be the kitchen 120 loop, okay? Because remember we have a kitchen 120 and a non-kitchen 120. All the 140 loops are in the main kitchen, and we're gonna work our way back that direction, okay? No, the 140 loop is only in the dishwasher. In the dishwasher. Just the dishwasher. Everything else is either 120 domestic or 120 industrial, whatever you want to call it. The venue. So, yeah, none of the sinks. I didn't. I thought that was weird. It's only the dishwasher that's fed with the 140. Okay? Yeah. So let's just say the three compartment dish, room, the dish three compartment dish areas? Are like that we saw on that venue? Yeah. Yeah. That would be 120. 120? So we have that same dish sink back here uh, for the water again. This, this venue will have its own shutoff valves up in this ceiling. That one has its own up in the ceiling over there. Every venue like that will have its own shutoff valves, okay, individually. Are you showing where the Ansel valves are? Uh, generally. So is there an Ansel in this? The Ansel valve is that tile in front of those drop lights. So the Ansel valve is straight up top. <coughs> okay. And that Ansel valve, each one has a shutoff valve, so it'll shut off the gas to this venue individually as they go along. If they have an Ansel system, you're going to have a shutoff. Even if they don't have an Ansel Okay, uh, I'll come out and we'll keep walking around the building. This is 
the dishwasher right here, right? Yep. All right, guys. Now we're in the dishwasher room. So the 120 loop, or the one, excuse me, the 140 loops we were talking about up on the roof are actually only going to feed this dishwasher area in here, okay? And it's only the machine itself. That's this system right here. So it'll come in at 140, and then the dishwashing system has a booster heater that'll bring it up to 180 percent of the area. That's the only one that'll come in at 140. Everything else can be with Mass production. And since we're in here and there's some ceiling tiles that are out. I noticed it was leaking the other day. What was? Here in this spot. But I don't know if you guys are testing it. <coughs> it's not like the. We should now we're watching the roof. It might have been that uh, they found a leak or something that's been made by the town. Oh, okay. Yeah. They've been washing them down and brushing them with a, a broom, so maybe they got some more that they were named. Didn't know it was not sealed. They're still washing the roof. Yeah. <laughs> All right, since we're here and we talked about VADs, we can see a box right here. We have a tag VAD 2-3D. So these VADs are what provide... Um, it's like a zone reheat, okay? So we blow cold air out of the air handlers, and each space, each zone, it might not be necessarily a room, but each zone will, will have reheat. And that cold air goes through this reheat coil right here. There's copper piping. Um, we can see some piping up here, and there's a control valve. So I just want to show you that there are control valves and auto flow devices. I used to have a laser pointer. My other time. So this is the VAD device right here. This is the coil. We have supply piping at the bottom. If we follow this back up, there's a control actuator right here. The auto flow has the white tag on it. That allows a, a set amount of GPM to go through the unit. And then on the inlet, there's a strainer up here. So every VAD is piped the same. They all have um, inlet isolation valve, outlet isolation valve, Inlet strainer and an auto flow with a control valve attached to it. And it's all a hose kit, okay? So there's probably roughly like 25 or 30 of those units. Half are kind of air handler one, the other half are air handler two. Okay? And those are, we'd have to check drawings for those to know the exact locations of all of those units, but that's what's providing the reheat, the heating of the building, okay? Um, again, 140 line in here. That's it for here. We'll keep going out and around. Why would they want to do it right We just have two restrooms here, so the hot water going into these restrooms will be our non-kitchen 120 degree loop, okay? Remember the mixing valve for that one? All right, guys, we got another venue. We have another sink. We clarified that all these sinks out here are going to actually be 120 degree sinks. We have shut off valves to the sink underneath. The 
fixing itself, okay? We started over there. Something common to all the venues, though. Yeah. All right. All right, we're at another venue. We have gas appliances, so there'll be gas shutoff valves to each unit behind it. So the guy up on the wall has its own shutoff valve and a regulator. There'll be, again, water shutoff valves in the ceiling located above the unit. <laughs> we've kind of moved along. I haven't asked too many any questions regarding any of the stuff that we've kind of covered so far. Plumbing valves or any of that kind of stuff yet? Okay. We'll keep going into the main kitchen. All the Again, each venue that has any gas appliances will have its own ANSEL system. This panel is open so you can see the ANSEL system. That will be a training by someone else. But each venue has its own ANSEL system. Remember, any gas appliances, we got some down here. We got shut off valves, so all the equipment that require gas. Okay, this one? The steamer here has RO water. There's only one, one more RO that's in the, it's in the back of the global. That's the only two places that they have RO. Okay. Is it a steamer again? I believe so. So these are steamers here. There's an RO system in the very back. We'll show you guys where that is. There's one more steamer located in the global venue. That was the global venue, okay? So that has RO water as well, okay? So, and the ice maker over here, okay? Shut off valves for this area. They're kind of spread out. We can point them out. I know there's a couple up here to shut this off. Okay. In the buildings, there's kind of like little zones for isolation valves for the domestic water to hit up sinks. Like this sink will have a couple shut off valves in the ceiling above us. Wherever the the the, the, the device is the sink or fixture or whatever we're using, the shuttle valves will most likely be up in the ceiling. Um, we have a BIM model. It's like a, a three-dimensional computer system that will have all the locations of valves uh, that will get turned over from Sun. So you can download those onto like iPads and tablets and then you can literally hold it and scan the ceiling and it shows you where you're looking at in the ceiling. Um, so that would be the best way to figure out the actual location. I mean, it's pretty easy to pop the tiles. It's going to be right above, pretty close in that area. Yeah, none of that on this one. But that could always be added. Again, all these sinks are going to be that 120 degree kitchen return loop, or kitchen loop. So if you're struggling with temperatures in here, you want to make sure you're checking that system. Okay? The kitchen domestic hot water loop.
we have another set of restrooms here, men's and women's. So if we're having hot water issues in one of these two rooms, it can be on the domestic non-kitchen 120 loop, okay? Just make sure you kind of remember to differentiate the two 120 degree loops, okay? We're at restrooms again now, okay? Um, that's all you got for those. Shut off valves will be up in the ceilings again for those. But each individual sink and urinal will have its own shut off valves as well. Okay? So if you need to just stop one urinal, you can isolate that one unit instead of shutting the whole bathroom down. Robert, the janitor closet. Non kitchen loop. Do you remember? Um, is it a non kitchen? Because I don't know the 120. Well, there's a 120 kitchen and a 120 non kitchen. I thought that was 120. Okay. We'll have to double check the drawings. We do have a janitor closet in here. Double check what line that is off of. It would probably be the kitchen loop. Help with this one. So the last thing we got to do is water in, water out. Water in, water out. Is the reverse osmosis got a three stage filters and and then it goes to the diaphragm. It's just a typical osmosis. Okay. So it goes to the four stage and then it all comes out. These are these are out. So we had the steamers and the ice machine. This is the RO system that's gonna be providing the water to those systems. But this is where the RO water is generated right here. Is it going to this machine too? Um, I, was, I believe it's just the steamers and the ice machine. Can you say the dishwashers or anything? No, just the steamers and the uh, ice machine. And global. And, and global. I think that the steamer and global. Yeah. Should be labeled, but if not, we'll identify it. So all these three things come together, this is out. Water in, water in, water in, water in, water out. So the water coming out of these valves is the water that feeds, goes into the tanks, and then the purified water is run through the tubing. Okay. It's stored in the tanks and open all four tanks that tie together and it goes out one and then that feeds the, the equipment. It's a lot of RO. <laughs> yeah, it's on right now. There's no demand for it, so it's off. Yeah, all right. So it's sitting idle. Uh, here. We're all the way at the end of the building. When we came off the first roof, I showed you guys the backflow preventer, right? So that water comes in right here. Okay, this is our main pressure reducing station for building D for domestic water. Guys, we got above us in the ceiling, we got our main pressure reducing valve station. Um, it required three inch and they use a multiple stage pressure reducing valve for this. So we have a one inch pressure reducing valve and a two inch to give us the capacity of the three inch, okay? So it's broken apart into uh, two pipings. We have a valve over here. This is our low flow regulator. We set the low flow regulator at the highest PSI, so that's 75 pounds. We got 75 pounds coming in, uh, or not coming in, but we have that as our outlet pressure, okay? So we're set at 75, and we want a 10 degree um, PSI um, differential between the two regulators. So the second regulator is set at 65 pounds. That way the two regs don't fight each other. So at low flows, we flow through the, big the small regulator. As the pressure keeps dropping, then it'll start opening the main regulator. So back in this corner is where that adjustment will be made. Um, have you guys seen, are you familiar with pressure reducing valves? This one, I mean, the one on the side is, it's called a Zern. It's a Wilkins 500 XL. 
there's an adjustment knob on the top. There's a lock nut you'd have to undo. Right. And then there's a spring, there's a bolt at the top. You tighten down to increase the pressure. You turn it to the left to lower the pressure. It's already set right now. Um, this will be something that you want to maintain and watch. Mm -hmm. I would say, um, probably like once a month or so, do an inspection on these and record pressures. <clears throat> Uh, each device has a uh, pressure on it. This main valve right here, the blue one, it's a pilot actuated valve. So there's a smaller regulator off to the side that's sensing the actual pressure of the system. As that little regulator detects a lower in pressure, it will start opening. And when that, pre when that valve opens, it opens the main regulator. As this, the pressure on the little regulator increases, then it starts um, applying pressure back to the top of the diaphragm in the main regulator here, and it closes the valve. So it's essentially it's like a master valve? Yeah, it's like a, yeah, what they call it pilot. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, there's a pilot and a master, I guess is what you could call it, yeah. So the pilot is operating the master. They just can't make a, a valve that big that controls the diaphragm that big. So they use like a little pilot to, right. to modulate it. Right. Let's see, I think that's it. Do you guys have any questions about anything else? Again, shutting off water to this building, you're gonna to wanna to shut off. Um, the guys in the morning class like shutting the outlet valves, so that'll be this one, this side over here. Uh, let me double check here. This right here is the outlet valve. So you'll shut this valve and this valve if you have to isolate all domestic water to building D. Okay? Say so there's a main main water break. You gotta come in. Eat it. But remember, like I said, if you can't make it in here to shut the water down, you could use the bath flow outside. Okay? But again, you have like 10 or 15 minutes or so before you need to turn off the pumps. I mean, turn them off as soon as possible, okay? But I wouldn't let it go more than like an hour or so. Cool? We went over all the isolation valves for each venue. It'll be up in the ceiling at the venue. Um, these are the main shutoff valves. We know what the main gas shutoff valve is. We know the general piping layout on the roof for domestic water, right? We'll go over more details of the water heater and the cert pumps. So if you have any questions on those, if you let me know now, I can do more research if I don't know the answer. And then we'll do boiler training tomorrow too. Um, hydronic pumps, everyone good with those? These ones are pretty simple. They're direct bolted into the, onto the impeller that the motor is. Um, no alignments needed. If you bolt it together, it's good. We're, um, do you guys source parts locally or for what for your pump so for any of that any of the, the equipment that we've provided that was a good question will be in our um, transmittal and our turnover documentation okay. so all of the, the vendor information and all the parts like that will be um, provided in that packet right there okay. it'll tell you who we bought it from okay you could always probably google and find like the local rep in the area too okay. so there's the vendor and then the local rep too so all right Okay. Cool. Cool. Any other questions? A lot of information. You mentioned something about uh, closing guidelines, which you can for service, which you, you know, all this stuff over here will be... Uh... For service, you will uh, deal... For service, I mean, any qualified plumbing company right. um, can work on any of the equipment. Um, you could also use, like I said, the O&M books and the um, vendor turnover information. I believe everyone that we've purchased the stuff from will show up in that packet of information, so you could use them as well um, for maintenance and all that kind of stuff and service if you guys can't do it on your own. The only reason I ask is like the heater, like some of the water heater, like the one water heater brand I didn't recognize. Bop? Yeah. Or RBI? Bach is the water heater and RBI is the boiler. Oh, okay. Well, I'm heard okay. Much. Yeah. So DB Sales is who we bought that stuff from. Okay. All right. Well, and we'll meet them tomorrow. Oh, okay. 
Ecco. Vai. Right. 